This is Sarah, and welcome back to the Function of Art, or the uh, Fart Vlog. Now, in my previous episode, I posed the question, on a scale which has more weight, a hand-carved marble statue that was created with technical mastery, or something like Marcel Duchamp's fountain, which is a urinal. I realize that for some of you, the implication that the conceptual value of the urinal might have as much weight or merit as the aesthetic value of the marble statue is completely absurd. Where I realize that there's a camp of you out there who, on the other side of the coin, think that the implication that something has value at all just because it was made by somebody with technical ability is equally as absurd. So, because there's the extremes on either side, I'm going to talk about craft a little bit. Craft! So without further ado, I, I have that definition written down. It says it's an activity involving skill and making things by hand. I like that. That's exactly what I think it ought to mean. Craft relates to some execution of technical ability, and technical ability, when thrown at some work of art, usually results in something that's aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to tell a story. The day that I showed up at contemporary art school, I had already six years of traditional art education backing me. So this is to say that by the time I even showed up in college, I had been learning how to draw and paint and sculpt and use a variety of mediums very well, and that was all sort of my foundation. So there's this other word that I said that might have keyed a few of you off, and that is contemporary art school. Now, when I say contemporary art, I do not mean art that was created now. Contemporary art is referencing a specific school of thought regarding art, and if you are familiar with it at all, you know that concept is king. It's all about the idea. It's all about philosophy. So, for some reason, I ended up going to a contemporary art school. I went there to be a printmaker. I brought a lot of my skills to the table, while making my prints. And during my very first critique, I hung all of my little, you know, print pieces on the wall. And when it came my turn to get all the shit flung at me by my peers, I don't remember what anybody else said, but I remember one person looked at me and they said, why do you feel it necessary to prove to all of us that you know how to draw well? And I was like, I like didn't know how to answer that. Like I just, I sat there. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm still sitting there. The very truth of the matter is that at this particular contemporary art school, not very many people had any technical ability whatsoever because it wasn't really important for you to have that. So this means that all the people sitting around me in my printmaking class, they never had any drawing classes or sculpture or painting or anything like that. The reason for this is because craft skills, technical ability, just didn't have enough weight here as being able to develop a sound philosophy around your work. Because remember, this is concept country we're talking about. The school was very adept at teaching their students how to create representational objects that communicated their philosophy. If the representational object that you conceived of to communicate your concept was something that you actually couldn't make yourself, it was completely normal practice to just outsource it to somebody else. That is to say, completely hire another person to come in and make your art for you. Why not, right? And this might be outraging some of you right now. Contemporary artists, however, did not invent this construct. I went to contemporary art school for a while, and then I left, and I went to the opposite coast and attended a design school. A design school is sort of like a, a school that's all about honing your technical ability. It's all about the craft. And even once I arrived there, in all of my, my classes, my core classes, the professors, they were training us how to draw and paint and sculpt and create images in incredibly well so that our skills could be used by an art director in order to create the things that they wanted to see exist. So we were effectively being used as tools. So remember in my last episode, I mentioned that over the past hundred years, there's been these examples in art history that have kind of redefined or adjusted how we view art. So 
One of the ones that I think I need to mention at this point is um, the artist who kind of redefined the role that craft plays in regard to an artist and their practice. And this is, of course, Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol, if you know the name but you aren't familiar with his work, he's basically the Campbell's Soup guy. He was the, the pop art movement dude. His artist statement was basically, you have all these images that are repeated in pop culture over and over and over again ad nauseum that eventually they kind of lose their meaning. They become so oversold that you just become numb to them. He basically mass produced images of popular brands. And to do this, his medium of choice was, of course, printmaking, because you can create a ton of one image super fast. Uh, he used screen printing, and in most cases, he, uh, he had fleets of people creating his work in what he called factories. And he actually called them factories because they just churned out print after print. And in many cases, he didn't even touch or see those prints as they were being made because they were fabricated by other people. Now, back then in the 50s, uh, it was on the table. Um, are any of these things that are made by his workers even able to be labeled as Andy Warhol's work? And I think collectively, as a culture, we wrapped our head around that and we're ultimately okay with that now because when we're talking about prints, yeah, of, of course, um, other people are going to be reproducing your work, but it's, it's still yours. You retain ownership of it as the artist. But um, yeah, back then people were debating, like, are prints still considered the work of the artist? Sounds crazy now, doesn't it? So back to my first critique over at Contemporary Art School. So I'm still sitting in my chair. This guy just asked me why I feel it necessary to prove that I know how to draw well. <laughs> and I'm staring blankly into infinity. So even though I didn't like it, this was the point when I realized there was a lot more to take away from art than what I was taught to see. The point is there is a range, and the range is really from it just looks pretty and that's enough, to it's a urinal on the wall that gets everybody talking. What you personally appreciate about art is entirely up to you, but just realize that there might be more there than you think, and that's what other people appreciate. So, in closing, I think for my next installment of all of this farting, I'm going to talk a little bit more about conceptual development. So more of that, that C word. Cause uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not done there yet. But anyhow, uh, until my next episode, enjoy the rest of your week and keep making awesome stuff out there. And as always, thank you for watching.